Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. This is Venkat. This is part 3, Built-in Types in C Sharp. In this session, we will learn about different built-in types that are available in C Sharp, escape sequences in C Sharp, and verbatim literal. So first, let's look at the different types in um, C Sharp, and all these are built-in data types. So, the first data type that we will talk about is the Boolean data type. For example, in your application, if there is a need to store a value you know, of true or false, then we make use of Boolean data type. For example, if there is a question, you know, are you a major, true or false? Okay, um, so if you want to store values like this, we make use of Boolean data type. Now, to create a Boolean variable, we use the bool keyword and maybe you give it a name b equals true okay so this boolean data type can only hold true or false if you try to assign any other value to this variable apart from true or false uh, then you will get a compiler error because b is a variable of type boolean which can hold only true or false so for example if I try to assign an integer to that a number to that immediately we'll get an error look at that red squiggly line and it shows you know obviously constant value 1 to 3 cannot be converted to boolean so that's an error okay so but whereas if you look at C or C++ a boolean data type usually contains 0 any other number zero means false and any other number means true but in c-sharp strictly a boolean variable can hold either true or false the next data type that we talk about are the integral data types that are available in c-sharp now there are several integral data types as shown in the slide you know byte short integer long etc now all these data types are capable of holding some number okay if you look at byte it's a single byte which means eight bits okay and eight bits can hold you know one byte a variable of type byte can hold a number between 0 and 255 okay so which means 0 to 255 or 256 different values okay actually if you look at how these sizes are calculated there is a formula behind that for example one bit okay can represent two different values either zero or one and eight bits together they can represent two to the power of eight distinct values two to the power of eight is 256 and zero from starting from zero to 255 is 256 values so a single byte can hold 0 to 255. So, for byte, there is another counterpart, S byte, S standing for signed, meaning it can hold negative values as well, minus 128 to 127. So, minus 128 to, you know, minus 128 to 0 or 128, and 0 to 157 is 128. So, 128 plus 128 again. 256. So if it's a signed byte, minus 128 to 127, byte is 0 to 255. Similarly, for short, integer, long, all of them have their counterparts, unsigned, unsigned. Okay, so an integer can hold both negative and positive values, whereas, uh, you know, an unsigned can only have positive values. It's not signed. There's no plus or minus. It's, it's only positive values okay now so what's the difference between these different data types they are from smallest to biggest for example byte is one byte uh, integer is 32 bits 32 bits is 4 bytes whereas long is 64 bits okay which is 8 bytes so in your application for example if you are storing the age of a person age of a person you know most likely couldn't be more than 130 or maximum is 110 20 okay so age of the person is relatively small number so to store something like that probably byte is more than enough 
okay but whereas if you're storing the population of a country then probably in that case you may choose integer data type because that's a little bigger number and population of a country is always a positive number so probably you want to use unsigned integer or if it's much bigger you know then probably you can go for long okay so depending on the requirement of the of your application you can choose the type that is appropriate okay now is it mandatory to remember all these ranges I don't think it's practical okay even if you forget the range even if you don't have MSDN accessible using Visual Studio you can calculate what is the biggest and smallest number that variable of that type can hold for example if I have an integer variable of type I I want to find out what is the minimum value that it can store and what is the maximum value that it can store. It's very easy to figure out because this integer type has a property. Again, we will be talking about properties later in detail. So this integer type, so int dot, it has a property called min value. And if you look at the property, this will represent the smallest possible value. This will show what's the smallest possible value that any variable of type integer can hold. So maybe if you want the minimum value, you can just say console.write line, maybe something like this, min equals whatever. So now if we go ahead and run this, obviously it will show what's the minimum value. And if you compare this with what's there in MSDN, it is exactly similar. Okay? So that's how you can compute the minimum and maximum. Similarly, if you want the maximum value, it's pretty simple. Use the other property, which is maybe max value. I want to rename this to give it a meaningful name. So you run that minimum, minimum is that and maximum is that. Alright, so those are the different integral data types available in C sharp. The next data type that we'll talk about is the floating data type. Float, you know, integrals, integral data types, they basically can hold a whole number. If you want, you know, a decimal precision, then that's not available in these integral data types. So if you want, you know, to store some precision values, then you can choose these floating types. You know, in floating point types, we have float and double. And they are much bigger as well. If you look at the float data type, it is basically 32-bit and the double is 64-bit. So they can hold relatively big numbers. And if you look at the precision, um, they are like seven digits, you know, after decimal, uh, you know, together with the decimal and, you know, the integral part, they can be seven digits, whereas this one is 15 to 16 digits. So that's about float. I mean, basically, if you want a precision value, then we can make use of that. For example, double D equals maybe one, two, three some decimal places I want and I can do that and if you just print that number so but whereas if you do that with it with a variable of type integer it won't be able to hold that decimal part there so for example if I make this integer in the I Obviously, you get straight away an error. Look at this. Cannot implicitly convert type double into int. Again, in a later module, we will talk about implicit and explicit conversions. All right. So that's double. Similarly, if you want float, uh, you know, if you want a lesser precision, then probably you can go for float. And the next data type that we have is a decimal data type. Now, decimal data type has much bigger precision. Okay, it has a 29 to 28 to 29 significant digits, and the data type is really huge, 128-bit data type. 
and similarly if you want to store any decimal value you can do so you know the type of that is decimal decimal d equals whatever is the decimal value that you want to store so these are different data types that are available in C sharp depending on the requirement of your application you choose the data type that is most appropriate all right um, you know we will talk about the string data type escape sequences and verbatim literal in our next video in part 4 thank you for listening have a great day